Welcome to this video about entering income information in uh, in HMIS entry in Service Point. So when you're uh, at this point, you should have already seen the video about um, universal data elements and about entry exits and all that stuff. So um, this is just a part in the entry assessment when you're entering someone's income for the first time. So the first thing we're going to do, there are three questions here that we're going to go over. The first is income from any source. And this is going to be yes or no. Do they receive any income at all? So if it's yes, that means that they receive any income more than $0 a month. And no, it means um, they receive no income at all. Uh, so for the sake of example, we're going to use someone who receives some income. This next section is a place to enter the specific sources of income that a person might receive. So if this is the first time someone's entered your program, uh, this will be blank. And you'll see that because it says no matches down here. That means that there's been no information entered um, about their income in the past. If that's the case, we're going to uh, click this HUD verification button in the top right-hand corner of the monthly income box. And that's going to um, open up this HUD verification pop-up. So at the top of this pop-up box, you'll see this select the receiving income source value for all incomplete source of income records. Uh, I would suggest clicking no at the top here. So by default, everything is set to incomplete because you haven't asked yes or no, you know, whether or not someone receives each source of income. So, um, and we, we need to have a, either a yes or no answer to all of these types of income. So what you'll do now that we have no answers for all the different types of income, uh, we're gonna select yes to the type of income that the person does receive. So you'll just click on the radio button next to that row. And once you do that, you'll see another pop-up uh, that asks for the monthly amount of that income. So in this case, we selected general assistance and we use general assistance to denote uh, public benefits from you know, the local department of social services in our area. So, um, you could enter the amount that they receive each month for that. You can leave the if other please specify section blank. This is just for like internal notes. Receiving income source, since you selected yes in the HUD verification box, this is gonna say yes. And then start date is going to go automatically to the, the date that the person entered the program. So you don't need to change the start date. End date uh, should be left blank if you're entering income information uh, for this person. So as you can see this, now that we selected yes, uh, this option is grayed out. We, we would have to, if we needed to change this back to no since we entered the wrong one or something, we have to go back and, and delete this record. But if you need to edit it, you can also um, select the pencil in this HUD verification box and edit that record. A couple things to note about um, income sources. Some income only needs to be recorded for all adults in a household. So for example, child support might be paid you know, because of a child or SSI might be paid you know, on, to a parent on behalf of a child. Those should be entered in the head of household's um, income record. Other household members, other adult household members, if they're above the age of 18, should have their own income record. So for example, if there's a two parent family and they both have separate jobs, you would have earned income listed on both uh, adult 
uh, members of that household. And they would be separate amounts for the amount that they earn in income. So once we have a yes or no to all 15 records in this uh, HUD verification box, we're going to click Save and Exit. That's going to bring us back to the assessment page. You'll notice that now, next to HUD verification, where before it was this angry red triangle in the top right hand of the box, it's now a happy green check mark telling us that yes, we entered a yes or no to all 15 uh, different sources of income that HUD wants us to ask about. And then lastly, if this is the first time you're entering income, we're going to put something into the total monthly income box that's below the income subassessment. So here, this person just had one source of income and that equaled $386. So that's what we're gonna put in the total monthly income box. Uh, if they had another source of income, we would add those two sources of income up and put the total in total monthly income. Okay, so this, we just described what would happen if you're entering income for someone for the first time in Service Point. This is not a typical situation because a lot of the time people will have, might have been in a program previously and what you see the first time you look at their income record is this, uh, is a whole bunch of income records that are already there. So, you asked a question, you know, at intake, what income do you receive right now? And they told you what income they receive. So what you have to do is look through, um, we should be doing, if there's already information here, is verifying that the information recorded in service point is correct at the time they entered your program. So say for exa example, um, our head of household right now, Angela Smith, she is no longer receiving general assistance, she's now receiving $800 in SSI. Uh, I know in our example, the dates won't line up because, um, because we're, we just entered that for the date that we're entering her into the program, um, but bear with me. So if we had to ex uh, end an old income record that's no longer true, so say you know we have this record here that says 386 general assistance, but she no longer gets this 386 in general assistance, we're gonna select the pencil next to that row and we're gonna enter an end date for this record. So again, like I said, um, the, uh, the dates aren't gonna line up right here, but in real life, this will be a date that's further in the past. So it'll be, this end date should be one day before the date that they entered into the program. And you also have to end and edit incorrect records if the amounts are different. So for example, if a client has earned income and it says that they receive $500 a month in earned income, but at the intake interview, you know, they showed you their pay stubs, they now receive $1,000 a month in earned income. What you're gonna do is also end that $500 a month earned income record and add a new record that says $1,000 a month. Here, we're gonna change both the amount and the source. So we're gonna end this 386 general assistance record, and then we're gonna click save and add another once we have the end date entered. And then this is gonna give us a totally new income box. We're gonna select, this person now receives SSI benefits of $808 a month. We're going to change source of income to SSI because that's what they're receiving. And then we're going to select yes to receiving income source because this is just saying uh, that this is an income source that they are receiving. Start date is going to be the date that they that you assess them uh, as receiving this income. It doesn't have to be the date that they first started receiving SSI. This is the date if this is the entry into the program, this is the date that they entered the program. And then end date again, we're gonna leave blank. 
So I'm going to click save and this is going to show me that I now have this record of SSI for $808 a month that started on March 31st. And you can see now that there's an end date here for general assistance, which means this is no longer an active source of income. Once you've edited their individual records, then you're going to go to their total monthly income amount and edit that. So we're going to change this now to 808 because that's the total amount that they're receiving. So that's all for entering and editing income in ServicePoint for someone's entry assessment. Thanks.